So I welcome everybody for this ESG project for the kickoff and uh, I start to share my screen to, to show you what we want to achieve today. We all have, uh, have done this already. <laughs> uh, what I want to show you is what I think are one of the key insights that I find really useful for structuring that landscape, that ecosystem into a way to better understand how each works together. What you see here is um, a graph that I have from a new white paper, September 2020, where um, the organizations that you see all the way to the lower end have developed. They realized there's so many people setting standards. We need some kind of overview. And I found this overview really helpful. You can read it actually from the bottom up. So the, you know, the source is really on the bottom. These are the organizations that have done this. And further up are, uh, is the structure that they're using. So what I have put here as number one, financial information here. Uh, this is already covered by the International Accounting Standard Boards with the IFRS and all the other accounting standards. This is, this is obviously in the interest of, of the company, you know, generating revenues and profits. This has an enterprise value impact. Whatever you measure financially has an enterprise value impact. And now if you go a little bit further than that and say, I want to measure performance more comprehensively, you then have what a CDSB and SASB, you know, the, the, also the Sustainability Accounting Standard Board, uh, have, have developed, they have developed metrics that are material for enterprise value creation. So this is mostly non-financial information that, are, that is important, again, for enterprise value impact. So there is, a, there is a part of sustainability that is used by investors just for the purpose of understanding economic value creation in the company. A little bit, you know, in, in parentheses here, this is where most of the ESG incentive systems today are located. Most, of course, there are some that are incentivizing their management for, you know, human rights and, and the wider environment, uh, but most of the metrics used today are, are basically metrics that are in the self-interest of the company, they're just not financial. So all this here, number one and two, is in the interest of the company. And then there is something that goes further than that. And that's where, you know, GRI and CDB comes in. They're, they're not only worried about, you know, that the company creates enterprise value for their shareholders. They're also worried that the company creates value for the wider uh, society. This is also uh, uh, non-financial information mostly, but it could also be financial information. You know, for instance, wages paid would be a financial information. And this is what the NGOs want. And that may or may not be in the interest of the company. And I, I find that extremely important because there's a lot of fighting going on. I hear it all the time. You know, do we really want to do it if that costs money for our shareholders? And of course, you know, at the end of the day, the shareholders are the owner of the company, owners of the company, and you can't really, you know, go against their interest. But I find it so difficult to make to make the, the cut between what is beneficial only for the shareholders and what is beneficial for the, a wider um, audience and not in the interest of the shareholder. I think it's almost impossible. You know, if you train apprentices uh, at a large Swiss bank, you know, of course, that also helps society. You know, the apprentice system in Switzerland helps, helps society a lot, but it may also help the company. It may also be that that apprentice, you know, that the, this apprentice, uh, how do you call it, this, this learning <laughs> uh, is, is, is leaving the company right after they have finished their uh, education. And then it's not really in the interest of the company to do that. So I think, uh, honestly, the differentiation between what is in the interest of shareholder and what is in the interest of the wider stakeholders is such a gray area that I don't even worry about it too much. So what we are doing now in our project, we are saying we're collecting everything here. And at the end of the day, you will have to set priorities. 
and your priorities may go further if your investors are more interested in a wider benefit. You know, I hear this from debt wheeler, for instance, or you may set your objectives closer to the narrow short-term interest of the company if there is less agreement on, on being generous to the wider uh, society. So I, what I find is really interesting is to differentiate between commercial players in the field and beneficial players, so more the Allgemeinwohl players. What, what they do, the beneficial players, they do both. They both look at enterprise value, EV stands for enterprise value and other stakeholders, while commercial pl players only look at enterprise value. The organizations can now be really put into quite distinct cl uh, classes. So you have all the rating agencies here, and these are the ones that we find most important, including the Dow Jones Sustainability Index. And of course, beside the rating agencies, there are also a lot of commercial players like Ecovadis and Sedex and Hubermatt as well that work on behalf of the issuers that, that are more consultants. Uh, uh, while these companies here have, have, are not really consultants of the companies, they're consultants of investors. And then you look at the beneficial players, those that I find the most important one is CDP, I think is far more the most important one because climate change is, is a, a risk where investors and society really come together with the, the task force for financial uh, uh, related uh, financial disclosure, climate related financial disclosure, the CDSP, I don't want to go into that, of course, GRI is also a nonprofit. Interesting is a company that does quite a bit in this space is the WEF, the World Economic Forum. They have quite a useful first set of maybe a dozen or two dozen metrics that they find very useful. And I find them actually quite interesting. And also the World Wildlife Fund, they are also very active in setting standards. Where I think, uh, you know, you may or may not be aware of that, but there's this organization, B Corp, it's an NGO as well, that goes a lot further than the ones, you know, above that are focused mainly on the environment. The B Corporation status is, is a comprehensive sustainability um, analysis, basically, uh, an assessment and a rating where you can become part of, um, of that of that movement and and and, and set your uh, and rate your own sustainability or society performance with their standards. I find that very useful because it's an NGO. While all the other standard setters here, all the other raters, these are performance raters. They're all commercial operations, and you're not getting their information. While B Corp is an NGO, and they make their assessment publicly available. So between those two groups. Uh, I find the interesting differentiation that the left group, you know, is really focused on investment opportunities, while the, left, the, the right one is, you know, promotes long-term benefits. Their clients, you know, the commercial players, their clients are investors that pay license fees. You're not a client of them. So from your perspective as an issuer, issuing stocks on the public markets, this is just investor relation. If I now think about executive compensation and, and this project is really under the head of executive compensation, not because I believe you should now make incentives for all the sustainability criteria that we find, but looking at it from a compensation point of view really helps differentiate what is how valuable. So I always look at, you know, when we do this project now, we always look like, is this, is this valuable for compensation? And if it is, it's probably also valuable for communication. So it's a very good filter to, de to decide if a certain information is really useful as a performance metric. Now, if you look at that, you know, uh, and, and, and then at the rating agency, and if you think yourself, um, uh, I can just use the rating agency's ratings on ESG, and that's fine. I think there's a huge problem because all these rating agencies they are very secretive about their values. First of all, they may be different from your own values, but also about their methods. And you know, if you look at how many are there up there, it's probably already a, a dozen or half a dozen. Uh, it's really almost impossible to use all these rating your compensation system. 
And in addition, they have a conflict of interest because they're not working for you, they're working for your investors. So, you know, I have, um, I, have I think it was that wheeler that said that where I, I got the message or was it, you know, where I got the message, well, we are one of the best in, 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 uh, in our industry, but we still just got a very low rating from, from the rating agency because they don't like our industry. So this is really not very useful for you because you can't change your industry like that. So you need a measurement where you can assess how good you're doing in your environment. And for that reason, I think the solution is you develop your own, and we call it triple bottom line, ESG performance measurement system. And this is, this is really the objective of, of this assignment here. I think, as, as Herman said, coming out of this uh, this this project, uh, what we'd really like to do is to come to kind of a comprehensive list of selected metrics that you could use uh, in your um, either in your compensation or in your reporting to uh, to ratings agencies. And I think, as uh, it was mentioned earlier, the I, the metrics that you choose will then also depend upon the the main priorities within your company. So. The key materialities for each company may differ, uh, may differ somewhat, but, you know, we'll be focusing on, uh, you know, a lot of the topics, whether it's related to, to climate uh, or um, the social factors uh, or governance issues that we think are the key metrics uh, to look at. So we've been collecting a number of different metrics. And at the moment, we have uh, almost 1,200 metrics in our current long list, and we continue to, uh, to, to, to bring in metrics that we that we evaluate. So as uh, Herman said, we're really looking at building a comprehensive system that, uh, or at least, you know, creating a very, a very thorough um, and comprehensive long list that we then try to narrow down to the key metrics uh, that we think should be then included in this uh, ESG triple bottom line framework. Uh, so when we look at the different metrics, and there are not a lot of them out there, um, even just looking at the first, some of the top providers, not even going through all of the ones in the overview slide that we looked at earlier, we have almost the 1,200 that I said. Uh, and what we did is we really tried to um, create our own uh, evaluation of each of the metrics. So we look at uh, some of the factors which are, which are very factual, so things like the data type. Um, is, it a, uh, is it a metric that's simply a yes, no question? Then you have some that are, um, uh, that are a currency. So how much uh, revenue was generated from sustainable product in such and such area? Uh, that's the second uh, data type. Then we also have a number of metrics that have a numerical value. Uh, so this could be an emissions level. This could be uh, um, kind of number of uh, uh, working hours, et cetera. Uh, there are a number of metrics that also look at uh, the, the, that are a rating, uh, so that have some qualitative um, aspect to, uh, um, uh, to that particular metric. Some are uh, just a text description, uh, and then some are a rank. Uh, so as you can see, there's a lot of different types of metrics that are out there. Uh, and we're really trying to classify each of the metrics that we've included in our, uh, in our review um, according to their data type, because this will ultimately have an impact on how you report it, uh, the appropriateness, uh, if it is something that you wanna build into a compensation plan, uh, you know, there are, different, there are a number of different ways uh, to do that. So we're really trying to classify them also by data type. Uh, then there are two other things that we do with these metrics. Uh, very often from the rating agencies, they do fall into certain categories or subcategories. Uh, but because we're looking at so many different ratings across uh, so many different rating agencies and some metrics uh, across a number of different providers, we are um, also creating our own categorization. So a general category of whether it's an ESG, an environment, social uh, or governance related topic um, or metric. Uh, or if it's what we call products controversies or ESG in general is sort of the, those metrics that don't fall into any, any bucket very cleanly. So when we look at products and controversies, these two are maybe less, uh, less intuitive than the first three products are really um, those metrics related to products, uh, whether a company is involved in a product that is, um, the, that is, that is not so sustainable. So it could be, uh, you know, things like tobacco, weapons, 
um, uh, some of these categories that tend to fall into uh, a bit more um, controversial areas. Uh, and then there's the controversies category, which is uh, if a company has been involved in some kind of a controversy, and this may be for any reason, uh, irrespective of the product category industry that they are in. So from that uh, category, we then created a number of subcategories, and this is a, uh, this is a, this is a living list. So this is the list of the subcategories that we have so far. Uh, and as you can see that there are a lot of, um, you know, there are a lot related to the, 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 the categories we've mentioned so far. If we go on to the next slide, uh, when we look at uh, these different metrics, we are also trying to consider, uh, I think, two outcomes. So when we look at the metrics, we've talked a lot about compensation, we've talked about rating agencies. Uh, and I think that when we look at the metrics and how appropriate they are, there are two different ways to, to use them and two different ways to for us to evaluate them. So I think when we come out of this um, project, the goal is to have a set of uh, metrics that we say um, you know, are better suited towards compensation. Uh, and that's really the primary focus. Um, but it may also be that there are a number of metrics that we identify that could be useful for you to include in your reporting um, uh, and in your reporting to ratings agencies. Uh, which you may or may not already be doing. Um, uh, so there's, uh, I think, some additional metrics that we'd like to call out that could be relevant, uh, trackable, uh, in which it may help boost your uh, or provide a more comprehensive reporting to, to rating agencies, uh, but they may be different ones than different than the ones that you really want to include into the compensation. So when we look at compensation, a few of the criteria that we look at are really relevant. So I think that's the most important one. They must be relevant to your ESG priorities, to your sustainability priorities as a company, your strategic, um, your strategic priorities. Then we say that they really need to be practical to measure. It needs to be uh, a metric that you are able to measure. Uh, we talked a little bit about quality earlier on. So a, a metric that is able to measure, that is, practical to measure and also practical to represent uh, actually the performance of the company. So, uh, and also for it to be done on an annual basis. Um, you know, with a lot of the sustainability metrics as you are working towards building um, and, and working towards sustainability over a longer term, there is still that short-term annual aspect that needs to be able to be tracked uh, within a metric um, in, a, in a meaningful way in order for it to be embedded into your compensation. And then there's one other point that we looked at, which is prevalence among peers. Uh, so if we look at uh, you know, the Obermott method of also looking at relative performance measurement, uh, we want to have an idea of how, much, uh, how many of the peers are reporting on a particular metric. Uh, and, and that may be um, in order to have that complete picture so that we can compare against some of the peers, but also if there are metrics that peers may be reporting on that you are not, then that's already giving a bit of a, a, a picture. Uh, so that's on the compensation side. Um, when uh, it comes to the rating agencies uh, here, um, you know, as I said, there may be metrics um, uh, that are relevant that that would be that, that you're tracking that could be uh, relevant for ratings agencies, but maybe you're not. They're not being reported at the moment uh, for whatever reason. Um, obviously, the reporting on sustainability is a is a big task. Um, and one that isn't maybe isn't as embedded into uh, all organizations that it as is some other functions. So we're really looking at um, identifying some of those metrics, which uh, may be some low hanging fruits. So you may have this uh, some of these numbers already, but they may not be reported. Um, also looking at things like measurability. So uh, in addition to uh, from a compensation perspective, where the metrics should be practical to measure annually when you're looking at using them for reporting to rating agencies, then I think there's also a certain of a cost uh, efficiency, you know, how, how much effort uh, and how much resources needed to actually track that metric. And that's something we try to take into consideration in this framework as well. Uh, and then also relevance. So is this uh, a measurement effort that you're going through for, for one uh, ratings agency, or is it one that, is re that you can uh, then report to, to multiple? I, we wanted to start to show you a little on, you know, based on a concrete example or a concrete topic, um, 
what some of the initial analysis has been showing us. So, I mean, this is just now the, the, the kickoff workshop. Uh, obviously, we still have a lot of the work ahead of us. Uh, but what we try to do for today is to take a look at some of the metrics in the area of diversity, equality, and inclusion. Um, and we won't go through all of them now. It's a very long list, uh, as, uh, as we've mentioned, but um, wanted to talk a little bit about what we're looking at when we look at these different metrics. So when we start with our long list, uh, even within this topic of this, let's say, a sub-sustainability topic of diversity, equality, equality, and inclusion, we come to a long list of about 116 metrics. Um, what our approach is, is to uh, continue with the classification, as we had talked about earlier, uh, and, and, uh, mapping them along the categories and subcategories, uh, and then also defining the type, et cetera. Uh, and then the other thing that we wanted to do is to then also now map these metrics uh, as much as possible along the GRI categories um, that you have in your GRI reporting. And we'll come to that in, the, in, in a few slides in a little bit more detail. Then after we do those classifications, really looking at the, identifying that short list of metrics for this triple bot bottom line uh, uh, ESG framework. Uh, and then from that short list coming to a final selection. And these are some of the things that we'll be talking about in the next uh, uh, two workshops that we have uh, with this group. So as you can see, there's a lot of metrics out there and there's also a lot of duplication uh, across the metrics. Uh, but this is kind of the, the, the process that we're going through uh, in trying to identify some of that duplication to really come down to a list of the core metrics uh, for, for you to focus on. So if we look at these, uh, this topic again in a little bit more detail, what we did is we divided it up. So if we look at just those yes no metrics, these are the types of um, topics that they covered. And when we look at the, numbers, uh, the, the numerical uh, metrics that they cover slightly different topics. So just starting on the left-hand side, looking at the yes-no uh, metrics, we see that they include, and this is not a comprehensive list, but just to give you a bit of a feeling for the types of metrics that are included here, they really look at things like training and development. So is there, uh, is there a development policy in place? Uh, are there training guidelines set out for, for the employees, for management, executives, et cetera? Uh, so again, on the yes-no side, it's things like code of vendor conduct, vendor certification, uh, audits, yes or no. And then audits is something that you see on the right-hand side where they, there are metrics that go into a little bit more detail as to the quality, frequency um, of those audits. Uh, when it comes to customers, you know, were, were there product recalls and, uh, uh, you know, are they tracking customer satisfaction and retention um, on the more... Um, uh, on the right-hand side where the metrics give a little bit more of a picture around the depth uh, or the, um, the performance on that, then there are things around customer controversies in terms of the number uh, that may be a percentage, that may be a, you know, is the number going up or down, uh, uh, number of product recalls, um, things like that. Uh, so you can see that there's a lot of topics that are covered and they're picked up in the metrics in slightly different ways, some in yes, no, and some with much more depth behind them in terms of a, a, a numerical value that, uh, that is then that becomes a bit more suitable for, um, uh, for a compensation or for reporting. The next slide looking at the GRI categories, this is just to show you that, uh, you know, uh, since many companies are reporting uh, already along the, uh, using, uh, their GRI reports, uh, we also wanted to map these metrics against those to simplify some of the GRI reporting um, so that we are a bit of a match between the metrics that you'd be tracking for compensations for rating agencies and also your GRI report, which obviously uh, you know, are, um, is also related to, uh, to, to what you're putting together from the reporting perspective. Um, obviously, not all of the metrics fit very cleanly into one category. Um, so that's something that we are also evaluating is how to, uh, how to address those ones that don't fit into necessarily a GRI category, but maybe they fall into um, a, 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 a category that's related to one of the other um, standards. Uh, so that's uh, sort of you know, just to give you a little bit of, a, again, a bit of a feel of how we are um, now category, another level of categorization uh, for these metrics. So of course, if you have 
GRI, uh, you know, the GRI index is, is, is a lot of classes. So, you know, we'll probably end up with 200, maybe 300 metrics classified in maybe 50 or 60 or even 80 um, uh, GRI numbers, you know, categories. So it's, it's going to be quite comprehensive. It's good for a data analyst, but it's not good for communication purposes. And the idea is then that we, uh, when we select the metrics that are material to you, that we uh, condense them in something that looks more like a rating. So uh, this is this is illustrative now how that could look. Uh, a rating basically at this moment for ESG goes from A to D, a little bit like uh, the, the, the school grading system in the United States or the, the credit rating system in the United States. But that's not very intuitive. You know, it's hard to say if a BB is good or bad uh, or an A minus, you know, is, is, is good or bad. Uh, we believe it may be more valuable to have something that goes from zero to 100, uh, you know, points, for instance, a point system from zero to 100 or something that is more useful in compensation system where, you know, 100% is target achieved, 200% is maximum and 0% is, is, is minimum. And if you then convert uh, these metrics, consolidate these metrics in some way into a rating, it would be a lot easier to communicate. I, I have illustrated it here with uh, what I now call the trip and bottom line graph. This graph is not based on currency values. So when we look at TSR, for instance, the company has not lost, you know, um, a share in their share price, you know, this amount. What they have done is they have underperformed the market by this much. So at the end of the day, it's a percentile rank. They have overperformed on profit. So it get, you know, there's a little bit, you know, adding up again done. Then we come to sales, you know, and there's, in this year, you know, in this example, it's only illustrative. They've outperformed a lot on sales. The beauty about this is that we can add people and planet, you know, for the triple bottom line, this is probably people planet. Uh, and in here, in these categories, we can use whatever you have prioritized, whatever you have decided is your major focus. And because in ESG, you probably don't focus on just one aspect. There are probably a couple, you know, there could be employees, customers, governance, environment. And at the end of the day, when you, you can actually convert all these ESG criteria into the same idea of a point system from zero to 100 or from 0% to 200% target achievement. And the idea is then to use this as a presentation of your own ESG rating, of, of, of really your ownership GS, uh, ESG rating. Now, it will be fully flexible. The idea is really that um, you pick the metrics you find important. Um, and this could be profit or basically a profit metrics as well. You, if you have a short-term incentives, maybe it's just profit and sales. If you have a long-term, uh, it's maybe you know TSR as well uh, for long-term incentives. And then now you want to add more metrics, uh, maybe net promoter score, maybe accidents you know that you avoid in your company, whatever you find is important, maybe your CO2 footprint, maybe your achievement versus the, uh, the science-based targets initiative. You can, all, you can all convert that into a rating at the end of the day. It, a rating can be based on your own targets. It can be based relative to peers. And this way that I'm describing here would be the way that you can then uh, uh, construct the graph, the graphical representation. So this could be the representation of your long-term incentive, for instance, and then your short-term incentive would look exactly the same, except that you have different metrics down here. Maybe there's more in, in the terms of innovation, more in terms of uh, customer acquisition, order fulfillment. That, that, so that's the idea. So that, that this, this graph can actually be done many times, also on lower levels, consolidation levels, on, on upper consolidation levels, uh, and in every, every, in every way, it communicates extremely well the performance aspect of both profit and ESG. We have one customer where we uh, developed the climate index, where this already came up, because, they, of course, they have their own climate targets. So they have a long-term climate target um, uh, 
to 2030, where they want to be climate neutral. It's an S SBTI uh, target. And then they broke it down to annual targets. And again, what we can do is we can look at how much of that target is achieved. So we, we, ha we could have an achievement from zero to 200% of that annual target. Or you could say from zero to 100% is the 20-year the target or the 10-year target reached. So, you know, even your, your own targets, uh, irrespective of the peers, could be converted into a target achievement. Okay, so it doesn't have to be, well, the, the comparison of the peers, because, for example, for, for carbon targets, I could imagine that it's quite hard to compare them at the moment to your peers, so to also evaluate the correct market performance. Yeah, we're working on that now, and it's really a, a tough nut to crack. <laughs> yes, yeah. definitely. So, so okay. So it would be also the the performance could be the how you much achieved of your own targets in a respective time frame. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It could be both. And what we what we want to try to do in the second part of the project, we want to try to come up with ideas how you can convert your own targets into. A rating from zero to 100 or into an achievement from zero percent to 200 percent so really you know to summarize first we want to get everything that we have found from rating agencies from investors from ngos you know all the questions that they have we want to convert them into all the metrics that we find in esg we want to categorize that by using the gri codes so that we have a comprehensive list. At the end, it's probably an Excel list where you select what is, what is material for you. And you can also select what will be material for you. So maybe you have not achieved it yet, but you want to achieve it in the future. And then in addition, when we come to compensation or performance assessment, we want to help you use this type of rating system to display your performance towards investors. Mm -hmm.